when he first talked to Mr. Wright, uh, he wanted someplace, a home where he could make 360 degree turns, not have to back up or maneuver. Uh, the doors needed to be wider. Um, and they had a club group. My mom and dad met in a Christian endeavor. And there was four couples that met Every month they go to somebody else's house and have potluck. So of course all the kids, we all went. And when we were at their friends, it was just a regular house. And if my dad needed to use the restroom, he would have to go up to the door and he'd have to have somebody behind, like my mom would come, and he'd have to scooch the wheelchair together because the wheels wouldn't fit through the, the regular doorways. Um, kitchens were another thing. With Refrigerators now, you have this, and he couldn't do it because he'd have to back up, and it would be, so they had one made, the, the door opened this way, the right door, as well as the freezer. Um, when we used to go shopping at the malls, etc., and you, you know, he'd pull his chair out and he'd get in, but to get up to stores, you would have to wheel through the slush and the snow and the whatever it was. And he and uh, some other people in Rockford got together. A lot of them were a part of the National Paraplegia Foundation, spinal cord research type things. And they talked with local news anchors. And Chuck Faber was a news anchor back then. And he said, all right, I take the challenge. I will go out on Saturday and try to do what I do on a regular Saturday, running my errands. There were no ramps in curbs. The doors with revolving doors, these two doors are locked. You have to use that. I mean, he spent the entire day figuring out how limited life was for people in a wheelchair that really wanted to get out and have autonomy. And they came and reported that. So that's where he was instrumental and they started the little wheelchair symbol signs, handicap parking, they put those up all around the city. And that's that was the start of it. Mr. Wright was able to give him a home that met eventually probably 85% of ADA today, but without screaming disability. It, it's, it's a beautiful environment to live in which again allowed him to lead a very full and dignified life. And I think that's probably, for us as the museum owners now, this is what we're trying to get across to our visitors.